and Chuck get you situated. Go ahead and make sure you're uh, sitting close enough to the mic that we can hear you, and then uh, you can move that mic around uh, wherever you're comfortable. Go ahead and raise your right hand. You swear or affirm uh, the testimony you're about to provide is true and accurate. Yes, I do. You're going to have to speak loud on that. Well, I think we heard that, but just as an example, when we go forward, we'll have to be able to hear you. Thank you, Mr. Jody. Yes, sir. Will you, will you please state your name? Uh, Dana Arndorfer. And Mr. Arndorfer, um, you're going to be talking today, I understand it, on seven different parcels um, owned in different entities, but all under the Arndorfer family umbrella, if you will. Is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes. And you are um, part of the Arndorfer Brothers Partnership, is that right? Yes, I am. And that entity has uh, four parcels that are currently targeted by Summit for this hazardous pipeline? Yes. And then you're also um, involved in your with your mother's trust who owns an additional uh, three parcels also targeted? Yes. Okay. And... Um, did you cause to be filed along with um, your, your, your mother's trust and your other brother uh, pre-filed testimony in this matter? Yes. And if we were to go through all of those same questions, um, other than maybe a minor uh, spelling error or, or word change, would your answers here today, if asked the same, be substantially similar? Yes. Um, and then along with your pre-filed testimony, I believe you also filed um, a few additional documents in a hearing exhibit, um, I thought, yes, uh, with some additional uh, photographs relative to the, the parcels in question that you believe are necessary to, to paint the complete picture? Yes. All right. I would offer... Uh, exhibit 286, which is the pre-filed testimony plus attachments, and then also Exhibit 602, uh, which are additional photographs. Are there objections? No objection. Seeing no objections, the board will admit. Now, um, sir, get, given there are seven parcels involved, and I know you put forth your best effort on the pre-filed testimony, but are there any uh, corrections or updates you believe are material uh, at this time to be discussed? No. Okay, very good. Um, with that, I'm going to turn you over for cross-examination. Some other folks may have questions. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Mr. Randolph, I'm Wally Taylor. I represent the Sierra Club. Um, uh, can we put up the KMZ maps and see how difficult this is going to be? Okay. Um, I see four red areas. Can you, starting from the left, describe what those four areas are? Um, that was That's one of my mother's parcels. That's the first one to the left? Yes, the way to the left. And then let's go the next one. Um, those are my brother's partnerships parcels okay and then the next one over that would be my mother's trust again okay and then the, the last one that would be the brothers okay so it's kind of like a leapfrog here yeah. right. um and it looks like um from this map at least the pipeline route would go um east to west across the northern, um, and not quite the boundary, but the northern area of all four of those parcels, correct? Yes, it would. Okay. Is that where you understood from talking to Summit that that's where the pipeline would be? Uh, originally, we weren't quite sure. It sounded like it could be either side of the road. Um, when land agents came around, we asked specifically, and sitting in my yard one day uh he just told us over there across okay. the road so let's let's back up um you said initially you thought it was going to be on the other side of the road do you mean north of that east west road yes we we had seen maps where it showed it possibly could be there 
So that would be off of your property, right? Well, <laughs> we have a property on the other okay. side of the road, too. That was my next question. Okay. Um, so you were a target either way. Yes. All right. Um, you said you talked to the land agents. When did you first talk to them? Um, our first meeting with the land agent, he came out one morning. We were um, hauling, we were going to haul grain, and he pulled in the yard, and he wanted to talk, and we told him um, we were busy that day. We weren't really interested in talking, um, and he just told us that we needed to get going on this and if we had any questions, and um, we asked him right out of the the shoot, we wanted to know who Summit was, and he told us it was an LLC, and we said, but there's, they have several LLCs, who are they? And he goes, well, do you know Bruce Rostetter? And we said, we're familiar with him, and um, we just weren't comfortable with that answer. And he said, do you have any other concerns? And we asked him about um, the location, and that's where he told us across the road. And um, so we, we went on and started hauling our grain that day. That morning, he sat on the road right by our grain site. It's, um, it's right there. He sat about there on the road, and my brother loaded the first set of grain, and he took off with it. This guy followed him all the way five miles into Corwith, sat next to him at the scale, followed him to the dump site, and then proceeded to follow him all the way home and then sat there again same space I was loaded and pulled out he started following me so I got about a half mile down the road and I stopped to get out and um, see what was going on he just says we really need to get going on this we're offering you good money aren't you interested and I said no and I said if you don't leave us alone we're, we're going to probably have to call the sheriff because he was following us around constantly. Yeah. So, um, when was your first contact approximately with the land agent? <clears throat> that would have been probably um, March of 22. Of 22, okay. Prior to that time, you had known about the project? Oh, yes, yes. We had gone to meetings in Lakota. Um, we had gone to a couple meetings. And, and such, and actually we did, I, I did have a phone call from a man who said he was from Texas one Saturday prior to that. My wife and I were having lunch, and a, a man called, and he said he was from Texas, and that he had sold his property in Texas, and he was up in our area, and he wanted to buy a couple parcels of land from me if I was interested in selling these. And, um... I said, well, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, you've got a farm, and he was specific. He, This one right here. This is the one farthest to the east. Yes. And he wanted to buy parcels in that, a parcel in each of them, a few acres. He fell in love with the area. And I was sitting there and talking with him, and I got to thinking, well, this is where they want to run the pipe. So I asked him, I said, does this have anything to do with something? carbon solution. He hung up on me. So I can't, you know, but he hung up. That was our first one. Then the other guy came and we had several. No one has talked to us in the last 16 months. Um, did you talk to the land agents about different routes? I, I guess you've already said that they originally were going to go north of the road and and then, at what point did you find out they were going to go south of the road? Probably when we got our first maps. But when was that? Oh, I don't recall. Um, How did you get those first maps? What's that? How did you get those first maps? Um, came in the mail. So you never talked to a land agent about a different route or an alternative? No, no. This area here, um, there's that there. Well, we've, we've got an exhibit on that exhibit, I think 602. It's a farm pond. 
and our neighbor owns it, and then we own this farm pond here, and um, it's going right between them. It's only, um, there's only 500 and some feet between those two farm ponds. Our neighbor has developed his, and he camps there. I've got pictures of him camping, fishing, hunting. We do all the same on ours. My wife and I want to build a house in the south one. We've opened up the north, um, right in there, the northwest part of that. Several years ago, we had a building site removed an excavator, and we um, removed a bunch of the trees in anticipation of we're going to build going to build a house there. Okay. Um, so which parcel were you going to build a house on? Um, right here. This diff. Yeah. The farthest one to the east. Right. Yeah. It's to the yes. Uh, the west part of it. See, there's a, that's a farm pond right, right there, and there's one right there. Okay. Um, what were your plans about building that house? Like when and and, and how far had you? Well, we have, we have removed a bunch of trees here like six, seven years ago, and it depending, <laughs> there are a lot of things that fall in place here, but it was going to be within the next few years. Um, but we've put this on hold now since, you know, for the last two and a half years. I'm, we can't have a house there that's only 250 feet away or whatever. At the same time, I've got, I live down the road and I've got a 20-inch toxic waste pipeline right there from my bedroom. I can't have two places like that. Um, so what kind of a pipeline already exists? It's 20-inch. And what is that? It's right. No, I mean, it's the summit. Oh, he, he the toxic summit. waste okay. one right there. Okay. That's like 290 feet from my house. Okay. And along that route, over, you take that route to Hancock County, there's five more farms just like mine or residences that are less than 300 feet from this. You go west of me, there's four or five more the same way, living residents that are that close to 20-inch toxic waste, pressurized. Does that concern you? <laughs> yes. Um, and this cross is my main tile line crosses for this part of the farm crosses just west of my house by 50 feet it's a 12 inch and it goes right they're going to cross that there and um i'm i'm fearful my house drains into that it's only 200 feet away the tile's 50 feet from my house i'm concerned <laughs> maybe i'm overthinking this but even vibrations sounds in your house i mean What's, how's this pipe going to be 20 inches pressurized and, and let alone if it ever ruptured or anything? So where is your house on this KMZ map? Boy, I'm shaky right there. Okay. You can see a little dot. <laughs> so those are, no, no, right? your, those are bent. See, that's yeah. right there. There you go. Okay, so the, it's the same area where the green bends are. Yes. Okay. Um, can you uh, zoom out a little bit? It looked like there are some some wind turbines there on the property yeah. south um, of uh, south of the. Uh, um, yes, there are. Yes, that's south of your house. Mm -hmm. Is that on your property? No, it's not. Okay. Um, when you talk to the uh, land agents, did they mention eminent domain? Yes. In what the context? Well, we were he, we were finally told at the end. He says, you know, um, the last time we dealt with him when he actually came to the farm, I think his name was Lan or uh, doesn't make any difference. But he came to the farm and he told us we never really talked money that often with him because they could not let us. They would not tell us who Summit was. We had a huge problem with this he, forever easement, you know, eternity. I always asked them, what's eternity worth? And they couldn't answer. But the last time he came on the farm, he told us we could tear up the original offer, that we could double it. And he, and then he first he goes, this is between you and me. He said, we could double this. And all that area that I was concerned with between the pipeline, there's not much area there to farm. It had been a, di a difficult situation to farm. 
He said, I'll get that thrown in for you. But he said, this is between us. He goes, we'll double the offer. And he goes, that's a good starting point for you. And we told him, no, we weren't interested. And then he says, well, you know what? This is going to go to eminent domain. And he goes, you've got a good chance of losing it and not getting um, what it's worth. And we just had enough of it then, and we haven't talked to him in 16 months. Okay. Um, how close would the nearest emergency response the personnel be? It's the city of Core with 300 people. Um, last week I went there. Um, the fire chief is also an EMT, and I asked him about it. If they've ever met with somebody, he said they did early on. And Summit uh, at first kind of indicated that they might provide them with an electric vehicle for emergency. He said later on they came back and said the expense was too great, that they wanted to do something regionally, and that they thought they would uh, maybe do something in Mason City. How far is Mason City? It's an hour. And he's told this Summit guy that, he goes, we have a rule here, a 60-minute rule. If you can't be there within 60 minutes, you're too late. The guy told him, you really will not have to respond rescue. They would want them more for um, evacuation. And he says that he told them up to four miles either side of the pipeline they would want evacuated. So. Uh, let's go to Exhibit 602. That's the farm pond on the north side of the road. And this is page one, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any of these 18 pages that you think are more uh, significant than others? Well, there's one with the camper on it and another boat on it, and they're all about the same. It's just okay. showing what what's there and what we have, and what we want to do to the other one, the same thing. We have the same plans. That's what we want to do. Okay. I think that's all the questions I have, thanks. Okay. Seeing no other questions, Mr. Jordy on redirect. Yes, a few. Um, you, you talked about plans, and so obviously if, if you already own land with a beautiful pond and an area where you'd like to be located, you say you're you're not going to do it if this project goes through. Would that therefore be an economic detriment to you because you have to go somewhere else? Yes, I mean, if I want to build somewhere else, I have to buy a property. I have to buy a like property, like what we want. So yes, it'd be a definite problem. Knowing that your home is uh, approximately 290 feet from the proposed pipeline, did Summit during your conversations you, you've discussed here? ever explain why you shouldn't worry about that or have ever tried to, I, I don't know, ease your concerns? Well, they, the only thing they would, they would say is um, that this project has only got a life of three to five years and either the technology would be obsolete or they had their money out of the investment, so we wouldn't have to worry about it after a few years. That's the most we ever got out of them on that. And, and a summit agent told you that? Yes. And and so once you <clears throat> learned that their exit strategy was just three to five years and they'd get their money out, did that make you feel any better about a permanent perpetual easement? No, because the easement's not going to go away. Now, when you asked who was behind it and they told you Bruce Rastetter, did, was it your perception that was designed to make you feel better because that's kind of a name that's known in the community? Or what did you think he was getting at there? I think he was trying to Your Honor. state the objection. Ian, this is just further direct. And in fact, the uh, issue of, the, of Bruce Rastetter's involvement uh, and the extent that the witness uh, believes that that's an issue is covered at page 18 of the pre-filed testimony. Mr. 
Victoria, you can respond to that objection while I look at page 18. Sure. Uh, not, I mean, the fact that he may have mentioned the name Rastetter does not foreclose me from following up on a question and answer that specifically just occurred here. Um, Your Honor, it's not just a mention of Mr. Rastetter. There's a question. Speaking of Mr. Rastetter, any other concerns about him the IUB should be aware of? This is not just a passing mention. This is the actual topic of the pre-filed testimony. Yeah, my question is what the summit's agent said. It's a mission. It's an admission against their interest. What they have represented to to my client here, and that is not covered in his pre-filed testimony. And frankly, I also think it's not relevant to any criteria that the board needs to consider in making a decision in this case. Well, it's relevant. Consistent. Okay, so by the it way, looks like the mention of Mr. Rastetter in the pre-filed testimony um, in multiple locations relates not necessarily to the interaction with the land agent. It may have come up in what was pretty clearly friendly cross. So if you want to continue with the question and rephrase it and keep it very tight and very short, and hopefully we don't have to keep revisiting these issues. Thank you. So, so just specifically, when when Summit told you in response to what you had said was one of the most important things you wanted to know, who is the owner? Who would be my forever partner here? And they said, do you know Bruce Rastetter? My question is, why do you believe that answer was given to you? Objection. A, same objection. B, unless Mr. Jordy is going to represent that this conversation happened after July 21st, if he thought it was important, this should have been in the pre-filed direct testimony in 246 pages of it. Again, this is not cross-examination. This is just a, a supplement to direct that for whatever reason they chose not to put in. These are not new facts. This was known beforehand. This is not appropriate redirect. Well, I am redirecting on a cross-examination question that I didn't answer that I have the right to explore. And, and we've now spent about five minutes on this where he can give a 10-second answer and we'd be done with it. Mr. Jordy, ask your question and move on. So when they brought up, and by the way, this is also relevant because there was a motion to have Mr. Rastetter testify here that was denied because he allegedly wasn't related to this project. And so when you were told in response to your question, who's behind this, and, and the answer was Bruce Rastetter, what did you believe that person was trying to communicate to you? Like, do you know who you're talking about here? I mean, I mean, he just kind of, a, a little bit intimidating, the way you would had to been there and seen how he responded in his, in his facial expressions. Like, do you really know? I don't know. It's a little bit little, just a little bit. And then followed it up later with the threats of eminent domain if he wouldn't sign. Yes. Did you did you say, forgive me? Did you say something about that? Then he he went. Oh, or no, I'm sorry. The elect the electric vehicle. The response there that I believe you answered on cross was, was it that that was going to cost too much, or what was the reason? Yes, he said it'd be in excess of a million for for a one electric vehicle, one electric fire truck. Okay, all right. So despite the ability for them to make billions of dollars, that was too expensive. Yes. All right. All right. I don't think I have anything further, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arndor. You're excused. Mr. Jordy, your next witness.